Hello. Thank you for joining us here at this webcast. I am so excited to have you here and learn more about this digital solutions economy. My name is John Froelich, the host of many of our webinars, webcasts, and other areas, and I'm a senior vice president here at Bramasol, and I am the chief evangelist for the digital solutions economy. In today's webcast, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this new model that we believe is going to transform the way companies think about not only how they deal with their customers, but the software and the way they acquire the software and mo modify the business processes they need to compete in today's new economy. So here we go. I want to talk to you specifically about a few things. Uh, what is the digital solutions economy? Why does it matter? Um, I want to show you our thinking uh, around how customers want to engage with you as an organization and what customers, the end customer, whether it's a business customer or a true consumer, is demanding to work with companies. And then how do we think we're bringing together different SAP or different solution areas to form the core of the digital solutions economy? Um, and then why is Bramasol uniquely positioned and maybe some takeaways and next steps? Um, so what is the digital solutions economy? Really, we believe it's the next evolution of the subscription economy. We know that people have been really looking at the subscription economy for a number of years now. Um, and we talk about subscriptions. Let's be clear what we say about that. It's this idea of a recurring or regular payment in return for access to a resource. Whether that thing, that resource is a good, like pet food, um, food that you buy, clothing, or anything else that you might order on a regular recurring basis, harrys.com um, or digital or, or um, Dollar Shave Club or another set of examples of those. A service. Um, honestly, um, you know, your lawn service or your um, home security is an example of a service, but there are many other services, concierge doctor services, um, car services. There are many, many different things or a privilege. Privilege is your ability to access content or a unique um, um, set of content that you might have or a privilege to enter. Um, an example of a privilege is your ability to go to the, the gym, right? Uh, or a privilege is Apple iTunes and signing up for Apple Music and having an access to their entire library of content. Um, there's a new channel out there called Magellan with all of this great new content, and you get a regular payment and you have privilege. But it's so much more than just this idea of subscriptions. People talk about this idea of EASS or XASS, um, something as a service. I think we've all heard about that. We don't want to spend a lot of time on that. But certainly that's the direction that many companies are moving, particularly software companies um, or others. Um, but what about things like entitlements, um, where you sign up and buy a set of um, pay an upfront fee uh, or a set of content that you can download? Um, obviously, you know, gamers are a big example of that and that you can um, do entitlements and you order games or content and then you are able to access and get entitled to different uh, parts of that. We have dynamic pricing models. Uh, great examples of that are Uber, um, but airlines, um, hotels with new models. It used to be that you had a standard model for hotels. You called the hotel and booked it. Now you have Booking.com, Hotels.com, um, Airbnb. Airbnb is another example of a dynamic pricing model. You go online and the, you, know, you can have a dynamic pricing model for that. Uh, Outcome-based models uh, where you pay for the actual outcome. We talk about printers as a great example of that where you only pay for the pages that you print, where you pay for an outcome. We have usage-based models um, that we're all familiar with. Uh, depends on how much I use a particular item. Um, what's interesting is to watch the insurance industry as they move towards this. Consumption-based models. So what's the difference between a usage-based model and consumption? Generally, usage-based models are based on something you pay for and then you use it up, um, whereas a consumption model says I only pay for what I, I bought. Um, consumption models can be combined with standard um, subscription models that say I have a subscription, um, think of it as I'm leasing a device, and then I have a consumption model around all of the software or the uh, consumables that go with that, whether it's uh, chemicals, testing equipment, um, 
or other consumption-based areas. And finally, this idea of revenue sharing models where multiple companies share revenue on a particular uh, area. And so, you know, we felt that subscription really didn't describe the entirety of all of these different models. And as we looked at all of what's happening, we're all familiar with companies like US Cellular, AT&T, T-Mobile, um, standard subscription models. But the industry in the world of COVID and everything that we've seen recently has really begun to accelerate transformation in many different industries like yours. Um, Stitch Fix and, and Birchbox, where you can order clothes and decide whether you want to keep them or return them for a small fee. The car industry is being turned on its head by companies like Porsche, Volvo, and others, where instead of actually buying or leasing a car, you pay a monthly subscription for the opportunity to change your car out every six to eight months or so. Peloton is another example of a privilege where I buy a bike, I pay a smaller fee for the bike, but I'm paying for the privilege of having access to this great set of um, coaches who and, and, and people who help you with your exercise routines, and you can pick the ones that fit best for you. So you can see how Describing it simply as the subscription economy narrows the focus, and it's really all about changing business models. Now, why does this matter to you? Well, because what we have found and the research shows that there are higher, you know, revenue growth is huge. You have higher growth rates. In fact, over the past several years, uh, McKinsey, Bain, um, the Subscription Institute and a number of other company, other organizations have shown that companies grow anywhere from three to six X in their revenue growth in the subscription slash solutions economy areas as opposed to their normal um, business areas. They find that there are higher margins and it provides new models and opportunities for you to sell products that you already have, but just sort of rejigger how people consume them. And then, of course, you have this smoothing of revenue and cash flows. You lower your costs. I think we all understand that. You reduce costs to com manage complex relationships by really looking at this. Um, you can become more efficient in how you deliver, upsell, and cross-sell. And, of course, on a... On a, a a revenue type model like this, you're going to lower your day's sales outstanding and improve your working capital position. And finally, quite frankly, it's where the world is going. Customers are demanding it. They're demanding it of you, they're demanding it of us, they're demanding it of everybody. Think about how you want to deal with companies every day and how you're changing your expectations of how you do that. In fact, 70% of executives when sur surveyed recently um, by one of the big four said that they believe that subscription models are the future. You should get on board. This is a chance to be a leader, not a follower. And you need to be a leader because as we've seen in uh, the recent experiences of the economy over the past 18 to 24 months, um, if you're not out there leading, you, are, you will be over. You will be done. And so you need to be a leader, not a follower. And of course, everybody who likes the stock market understands that Wall Street puts a higher valuation on companies with recurring revenue models. So with that, let's talk about the realities of the digital solutions economy. So, so let's talk about this customer-driven model that requires high flexibility. The first aspect of it is customer engagement. Your customers want to engage with you on their own, on their time, on their schedule, how they want. They want to be able to be in control of solution order and creation and management. They want to take bundles and create their own bundles and see the dynamic pricing associated with that. They want delivery and fulfillment when and where and how they want. And it doesn't matter whether it's a physical, a physical thing such as cat food that I order every month for my mom and it shows up every month uh, or it's uh, entitlements and the games or digital content that I want to access or the software uh, that you want to access. You want to be ensured that not only do you know what you're getting, how you're getting it, but when you're getting it, you want to be informed. You don't want 15 different bills and 30 different invoices. As a company and a customer, you want one invoice that shows you all of the information broken out the way you need to see it, the way you want to see it. For payments and collections, 
you want to pay how you want to pay. You want flexible terms. You want to know that I have the option to pay over time or I can pay in installments that might not be every month or maybe it's every month plus a balloon payment every quarter. You want to set some of that as your customers want to set that. They want to be able to pay you any way they want, whether it's via check, wire transfers, money marketed through their money market accounts, or even using things like Dogecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. They want to drive that. In fact, in many places, one of the challenges of our fintech customers and our fintech partners is managing all of these payments. What happens if somebody wants to um, do it via Venmo, iPay, Apple Pay, um, eBay has a payment management solution. So many different payment management solutions out there. So many different credit cards and credit arrangements. You need to uh, be flexible on how you do that and flexible in giving customers ways to um, manage their outstanding balances. And finally, revenue recognition. And I know this doesn't sound like a customer facing thing, but the reality is customers don't care. Your problems with how you manage your rev rec, your problems with how you manage these different uh, bundles is your problem. What they want is simplicity. They want the bundle. They want to see it. They want to know that they get what they get. And they don't want to have to worry about, I have the thing set up because, you know, my, my, uh, my vendor has to do rev rec. And for you as a company serving this market, you don't you want the flexibility on your software. You don't want us to tell you whether it's cloud or not cloud. You want apps to help support you. You want an intuitive, easy to use customer UI and UX. You want an intuitive user interface that you can use easily, that you're you can train people and people work well with, as well as a informative and useful, easy to use user experience. And finally, of course, as, as we talk about the insight to action, analytics along this entire frame to help you decide as a company how you can best serve your customers and how your customers are engaging with you. So as an organization, we've come together with SAP to offer you and talk about these ideas of how do these come together in the solutions economy. And we have this, what we call the solutions view. We offer commerce solutions. And one thing to be aware of is that this can be an all or nothing, or you can have different on roads to this circle. You don't have to do it all at once. You can tick, pick and choose the ones you want to do. You may have already done some of this, um, and you're deciding how do I best um, look at my revenue accounting or my cash and treasury to support, or maybe I'm not happy with the way I'm doing um, configure price and quote. So we offer flexibility. Um, but again, getting back on track, commerce solutions is all about how do you engage your customer? How do you let them know you know who they are, if they want you to know, how they want you to use? Sometimes they want to register, sometimes they want to be a guest. How are you engaging with them? How do you allow them and what solutions does SAP bring to the table in terms of price order quote? Right? We have configure pricing and quoting. We have SAP sales and distribution, SOM. There are many different solutions that can allow you to manage that piece of the process. At the end of the day, customers are buying something. They're getting something. How are you delivering that? If it's a physical good, are you using contract SAP? Are you using contract manufacturing? Are you using 3PLs or non-asset based 3PLs? How are you shipping? How are you managing the physical logistics of what you sell today? And if it's digital, how are you managing digital rights, digital supply chain and entitlements? Bramasol and SAP have offers for you in that space. I talked about finance billing and invoicing. Uh, SAP and Bramasol, we bring together a considered opinion about how you can leverage products such as SAP convergent invoicing to help you bring together all of your invoices into one place regardless of the billing or the order systems that you've provided. We can bring all of that information into one place. How are you managing uh, all of those, those aspects and reporting on it? From a cash and treasury position, Understand that this is a huge area that people often don't think about. Uh, how are you managing your bank accounts? How are you managing your payments? Do you have straight through processing both for the goods that you acquire and the goods that you are um, sending to customers? 
How flexible are you in those payments? How are you managing taxes? As we see the increase of this e-commerce or this cloud-based commerce area, and people ordering from home, different jurisdictions have now looked and said, hey, wait a minute, I want my fair share of the pie. I've been watching my tax revenues drop because of retail box establishments are going away uh, or are decreasing. Where's my revenue coming from? You have to manage all of those. And of course, you have to manage things uh, around um, global trade um, and, and others. And finally, reporting and revenue recognition and compliance. Um, and it's all about, you know, how are you reporting the revenue? How are we ensuring that you have a holistic view of what it is? And how are we ensuring that you are compliant with various regulations, whether it's um, SOX compliance, whether it's IC internal controls for financial reporting, ICFR, or the ones that we're most familiar with, things like ASC 606 for RevRec and ASC 842 for lease accounting. How are you managing all of that? Bramasol and SAP have come together, together with some of our other partners around things like hyperscaler platforms uh, and analytics to really bring you a perspective and an opportunity to really transform your business. We all think about the industries involved in here. And if you're like me, you previously thought about it in a fairly traditional model. We thought about companies that are in the high tech industry, whether it's Apple, Google, Nvidia, or others. Um, and that's an easy leap to make. But what about companies like Avid that are transforming their business uh, where they previously offered a, uh, you sold a piece of hardware, you sold a piece of software, they're in the music and sound production business. Now they're offering that as a service. Telco and communications, we understand, but what about life sciences? One of our customers, Cephian, offers testing equipment for COVID-19, but they don't sell the piece of equipment. Well, okay, they do sell the piece of equipment, but they also offer a consumption-based model where you can commit to consumption of reagents and test um, testing strips so that you can build a more usage-based model. Another company that we're talking to makes hospital beds. Imagine a world in which where you don't care where your inventory is. Your inventory may be at a hospital. The hospital only wants to pay for the beds that they use, but you have 500 beds, they only use 300. How do you manage that process? How do you enable that process? Um, media and gaming, we talked about that. That's easy, that's, that's fairly straightforward. But what about manufacturing? In the case of manufacturing, you have companies like GCP Technologies that doesn't sell a particular device, but offers that device based on the cubic yardage of concrete that is poured. Toyota, who offers forklifts not based on the value of the actual forklift, but rather the usage of the forklift. You, you pay a small fee to have the forklift on site, and then you pay for usage. And it can be multiple organizations. So think of wholesale and distribution, where now I have to create some kind of a revenue sharing model where I manage the overall warehouse, but I'm sharing revenue with companies like Toyota who manage and offer tools that I can use to move and distribute things throughout my warehouse. So what we're encouraging you as a customer, you as, an, as, as SAP and other people, is to think out of the box. Think about how you want to transform your industry. So where do you go from here? What's your path forward? What's the plan? First, you need to evaluate where you are and where you need to go. Um, how do you do that? Think about your business. Look at what your customers are asking. Read the information that you get from customer feedback. Next, consult colleagues. Talk with industry peers. Believe it or not, your industry peers are going through the same things that you are. And reach out to thought leaders like Bob Evans from the Cloud Wars organization. And really think about how they see the evolution of business models. Seek out help from knowledgeable partners with real cross-functional experience. A lot of partners and a lot of organizations will tell you that they understand this circle and that they work across that entire circle, ask them, talk to them, make sure that they actually have thoughts. And then most importantly, get started now. There is no time to waste on this journey. Other companies are moving rapidly in this direction, and so do you need to. 
Um, why Bramasol? Well, Bramasol has been an SAP partner for over 25 years. We've been helping companies transform their businesses from using simplistic QuickBooks type solutions into ERPs that help modernize their infrastructure and free them up in a flexible, scalable environment. We bring deep financial acumen with over 20 years of experience. Many of our experts are former CPAs, have CPAs, really have deep understanding of the finance aspects of this business. We are the deepest and most experienced organization in the areas of revenue accounting. Why does that matter to you? Well, because revenue accounting touches the entire portfolio of what we're talking about as you go through that process. You want to cut, you want a partner who understands the impacts and the upstream and downstream impacts and requirements needed to execute a model like this. We have deep cloud expertise. We've been doing this for nearly a decade. We started originally with SAP Cloud HANA and SAP by design in the cloud, and we've been working in the cloud and have a cloud mentality for almost a decade now. We're a co-innovator because of our ownership and because of our unique position with SAP, we do co-innovation. We work very closely with SAP to think about and evolve different models uh, for um, innovation in the various product areas. We have industry expertise. Uh, we've been working with various companies like yours, um, whether it's in the industries we talked about or others, uh, for many, many years. We've helped them implement revenue accounting, treasury, finance, and other areas. We have the right resources with the right experience to get the job done. We don't have just resources. We have the right resources. Our people have deep talent, deep knowledge, and they have the hands-on experience working with customers just like you to help you be successful in your transformation. And we're proven, we have a proven record with leaders in the digital solutions economy like Apple, Google, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, NVIDIA, to name just a few. Trust a company that's been there and done that before. Key takeaways, the solutions economy is here. There is no doubt that the solutions economy is the next evolution of subscriptions. It's here, you can take advantage of it. It's not a threat, it's a disruptor, but it's an opportunity for you to change your business. You have to move now. Now is when the time is right. The technology is coming together, but technology is only a part of the solution. Make sure that you've thought about your customer models, think about your business models, and finally get a partner who can help you across disciplines. Well, thank you for joining us. I'm excited for you to learn more about what Bramasol can do for you and learn more about the digital solutions economy. You can certainly contact us by going to bramasol.com and learning more about what we have to offer. You can click a link and learn more about the digital solutions economy and contact us to learn more. You can also join us on LinkedIn. Uh, check out our LinkedIn page and learn more about what we're doing and learn more about that space and join the conversations. Come on over to our Facebook page and do the same. You can also check out our nearly 100 different uh, videos on not only the digital solutions economy, but some of the core elements around revenue recognition, treasury, finance, leasing, and other areas. And finally, if you want to subscribe to our different podcasts, uh, we'd love to have you come over to Apple iTunes and join us there uh, or check us out on iHeartRadio. So on behalf of Bramasol, the leaders in the digital solutions economy, I want to thank you for joining us. Again, I encourage you to check out our website, uh, contact us to learn more. Make it a great day.